Howdy, I'm Luke, um, also known on YouTube as Thunderhead289, and today we're just playing around with some different fuel pumps um, and just taking a look at how they function. So um, I run a Facebook page, Thunderhead289 Carbon Engine Tech and Tune Forum, and uh, basically some folks have been asking some questions about fuel pumps lately, so I thought I'd make this video so we could go over some of the form and function of them. And I'm a big advocate for fuel return lines, and that's why this kind of came up. So we're going to take a look at how these work, and then some of the advantages of a fuel return line and why we do this. And as you see, our uh, 65 Galaxy is outfitted with a prototype fuel return line mount and um, a full return system. And it works pretty good, and hopefully we'll get that fired up here in not too long. So stay tuned for that on the channel. But anyway, so... Uh, people call this particular pump a clickety clack pump is the uh, <laughs> you know the kind of the pet name for these and they're usually pretty cheap about 30 bucks now um, I do a lot of revival stuff with vehicles out in the woods that haven't run for years or we run them off of a jug and if the mechanical fuel pump doesn't work um, you know usually one of these will get you by but it's not something you'd want to run on long term so um, just some of the function it's actually stupid simple it's it's super interesting how it does work so more or less it has a little solenoid in it that must click on and off and it just magnetizes this coil and moves this piston plunger back and forth so um, this side is fuel coming in and this is fuel going out and built into this guy right here is a little check so you can't force fuel to go this direction it will only go in it's a one-way check valve in there um, so what happens this spring is lodged in here like so so when it triggers it pulls this piston back um, and this little flapper uh, just goes forward and allows fuel to flow in front of the piston and then when it demagnetizes the spring actually pushes this uh, uh, plunger here down through the bore and pushes the fuel forward and it clicks back and forth continually and when you reach a certain point here where your fuel pressure is you know up to five or six psi or so you're overcoming this spring so that's kind of how it's regulated internally and it won't blow open your needle and seat is uh you know once you have enough pressure to overcome the spring you're not going to be flowing anything anymore so these are very simple obviously um this isn't going to last a long time in this bore um, as you see this one's weak this one quit pushing any fuel at all although the solenoid was still working you could hear it moving the piston back and forth and everything is still free moving um, over time things wear you get buildup of dirt on this plunger and there's just so much slip that you can't make um, any forward motion of the fuel so when I pulled this off it was only able to make about 2 psi where anything more than that I imagine the fuel was just going around the piston due to the slip so anyway that's the old clickety clack pump so let's take a look at our other one here. All right, so now we're gonna look at those other fuel pumps that you find in parts stores. They're usually a little bit more expensive, about 50 or 60 bucks. Um, I think the ones that they sell at this current time are Edelbrock, but as you can see, um, this is a Mr. Gasket, and they're all pretty much built entirely exactly the same. They all probably come from the same place. There's just a different cover put over the top of them. So these are a little bit better in the sense of form and function. Um, you might be able to get away with running them for a bit longer, although their gallon per hour rate is still pretty low. So you are kind of limited to a deadhead system for the most part. So, um, you know, basically how this works, um, the check valve on this one is on the forward side. So basically, um, now the key difference between this one and our clickety clack pump is it actually is an electric motor. So this piece has the brushes in it here that contact our little electric motor. And then there's magnets in this housing. So just to put it together here really quick. 
and it kind of sits in there like such. So fuel flows directionally through it. Um, the unique thing about this, as you can see, is you have open circuits and electricity uh, where fuel is flowing right through, but it's not a fire hazard per se as there's no oxygen there. Um, but you can see that with the motor heat, uh, it's, it's right where your fuel is, so we'll get to that in a bit and what I really don't like about this design. And it's, there's nothing really you can do about it. It's kind of inherent, inherent in its makeup. So um, this is what is called a vein pump. And basically there's this little, if we can get it aligned, there we go. There's this little offset disc that turns around and it has these little pieces that are thrown out um, with centrifugal force out to the outside that um, forcibly push fuel through this uh, cylinder body and then forward and it can't flow backwards because there is a check valve. As long as it's not dirty, um, it's going to hold forward or hold fuel forward for you. So anyway, and then again, once it reaches pressure here, this spring is what kind of limits your um, overall pressure. Uh, basically what happens when you get enough pressure on your line, that check valve opens and the fuel pressure here is such that it can't push fuel forward. Um, it kind of pushes back off of your housing here, uh, basically creating designed in slip and then um, fuel will then circulate just in this general area and won't be able to push forward until the pressure drops enough for fuel to flow again. And you know this at idle it's flipping back and forth very um, quickly um, in this regard. So um, one of the biggest things I don't like about these of course is when you're sitting at idle and it's very hot and your fuel is the main item that is cooling your pump and all you're working with is the fuel that's just right in this localized location. Obviously that fuel is going to get very hot. You can even vaporize that fuel and cause your engine to vapor lock overall. Um, kind of a weird deal that you can have happen with these. Um, but also when that fuel vaporizes and you have a pocket of air here, there's nothing cooling your fuel pump. So these are great when you're running down the road per se. Uh, but if you're going to idle in traffic for long periods of time, it becomes a problem. Now on this particular car, um, my 65 Galaxy, I have a big Holley, or I guess it's a knockoff brand. It's a Summit Black Pump, but it's got a very high gallon per hour to it. And then basically I have a full return system, so it's able to bypass a large amount of that fuel. And it keeps the pump nice and cool. It really extends pump life. And also, you know, we don't have any anomalies with our air fuel ratio. We're not vapor locking. It really makes for a nice, consistent carburetor tune. And I go over this with my F100 in another video, which I'll link below. But anyway, that's just a quick look at how these um, different fuel pumps work. Um, they're pretty neat, and I kind of always find it interesting how stuff works. A little problem I have, always taking stuff apart. But um, anyway, this pump uh, five or six years ago was in my F100, and just like the other clickety clack pump there it could hardly make any pressure so when it wears of course or if it gets dirty there's enough slip and such that you just can't move any fuel forward but this is a much better design if you're going to try and run something long term than our little clickety clack pump over there so anyway that's just a quick look at some of these very cheap basic fuel pumps that you'll find at a park